you know, the competitor that he is and the passion that he has for the game, the same that I have, you know, you put them two together, you know, you come up with great ideas and you push one another. You know, that's that's what he did for me. You know, he pushed me to be be great, you know what I mean? Because he used to come to me before games and tell me he need me, you know, and, and vice versa. I used to do the same thing. So, you know, um, that game, my respect even more, you know, um, once I really got that out of him. He's become such a great player. He's become an all-star. He's becoming such a better player. He's only going to get better being more physical, being more mentally um, ready, defensive-minded more, uh, still being able to go out there and get you 30, 40 points a night. We play off each other. He respects me and I respect him. At the end of the day, you know, we're going to ride or die with each other, we miss shots, make shots, anything, turnovers, miss anything, assignments, we're going to ride or die. Happy Halloween! DeMar DeRozan over the first two games of this season, 72 points, the most in his career through the first two games. Steal by Lowry. Lowry, step through, lays it up and in, his first bucket. DeRozan, jumper, good! Absolutely outstanding here early in this season. Boom! Hey, That's my brother, man. I think we become so close. Going to his house, playing with his son, vice versa, he come to my house, playing with my daughter. You no know, little things like that go a long way. It's kind of crazy that basketball brings you to meet people that you would never have met if you didn't have basketball. And I'm glad basketball has let us become as close as we've been. I think it, it evolved very quickly, and um, without sounding too hokey about it, it's certainly become a, a legit bond, a, a true brotherhood. It's been interesting to see because we watched it develop. When Kyle first came here, I mean, they were two obviously nice players who've grown into two terrific players who have this special chemistry on the court as well off the court, and sometimes that's an underrated part of the game, and to see that, that bond that they've gone through, the highs and the lows, of being here with the Raptors and end up to win a gold medal together, you, you can tell that it's really strengthened. <laughs> the tightness and the closeness of their family and of their children and the fact that it extends beyond the floor uh, to their social life and their personal life as well. Um, and I think that just adds to then the bond and the chemistry that does exist, as I talk about, on the floor and, and that sort of synergy that you have that anybody would have with a closest friend, a lifetime friend, a spouse, a partner, where you just kind of have that that ingrained, you know, synchronicity in a sense where I know what you're thinking, you know what I'm thinking. It's that unspoken word and it's, it's evolved really quickly with these guys, but it, it, it absolutely seems true. It doesn't seem like it's fabricated or it's for the cameras. It's legit. Bro, I, I watched you and I lose for 34 seconds. They all know me. They respect me. It was up to me. I, I think Kyle's grit and toughness and that Philly mentality, I think has brought out a lot of good things in DeMar. On the other hand, I think DeMar's calmness and maturity and positive, upbeat attitude has helped a guy like Kyle Lowry sometimes when he's gone through some tough times, kind of to help him get through that. Uh, because Kyle is uh, his own worst critic and, and expects a lot of himself. And I think having a teammate and a backcourt mate that believes so much in him, uh, I think they respect each other. Uh, they they have a tremendous bond. It's over. So we do. Oh. We're gonna fight oh. more. 
go to fight for? <laughs> well, you can tell that they're extremely close. And as I think everybody knows by now, it transcends the basketball court. Uh, you see it, though, certainly out on the floor. And then you also see it in, you know, post game uh, when one may be getting interviewed and the other one comes over. And you can tell that they have a relationship where they can kind of give each other the gears. Um, and yet, you know, they're still the best of friends and they like to have fun with each other. Um, and it's a, probably, you know, a relationship that's actually extremely rare to have. Um, you know, one that probably is akin to, you know, a family member uh, where you can say certain things, uh, have fun with each other, uh, and know that deep down inside you still care for each other. I think that just helps the relationship, and I think it helps maybe the, the, the culture around the team as well when you know that your two leaders can be serious and they can back it up, but they can also have fun and it doesn't always have to be so intense. There is time for levity in the right spots. Which skill do you want to have that he has? And which skill do you want to have that I have no clue. I, I, yeah, I don't, I, I don't want to be like you at all. I don't, I don't, I don't want to be like you. Yeah, yeah, no, yeah, no, none. When you're dealing in, 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 in professional sports, I mean, it's generally it's about me, right? You guys are taking care of themselves. So when you have a relationship where you really are looking out for the other guy and making sure he's okay, happy for him when he's having success, uh, you know, pushing him and helping him, you know, get pulling him up when he's down, those are, those are unbelievable relationships. So you don't see them that often. And it certainly is a unique one here to have in Toronto, especially, especially the fact that they're both in the backcourt. Uh, it's one thing, maybe a big guy and a small guy, but together, that's that's the backcourt. So it just tells you how solid the Raptors' backcourt is. I, I think they're both genuinely happy. When one of them goes for 40 and the other one has 10, they're they're, they're happy. Maybe not equally as happy, but but as close as you can you know be, because I think they know that the next game might be totally totally flip flop. Debo, way to bounce back. All those people uh, breaking their ankles now. Get back to the back. When you have. Uh, players that are elite level players uh, and you understand the importance of having each other in order to accomplish what you want to you know really deep level of respect will happen and that friendship will develop over time you know having a friend that you know um, that you can trust that you trust with just about anything that that life can throw your way allows you to play with the kind of calm and, and relaxation on the court and so when you struggle um, you know that you know, your co-captain is pulling for you, that they feel what you feel, and they're just as invested in your success as you are. So it makes it easy to go out there and lay it on the line, even if that means putting your body in harm's way. I mean, anytime you get two stars, um, two all-stars who are on the same page, and you know they're not fighting for one else's position or whose team it is, um, that's when you have great teams. And when other guys on the team, you know, three through 15 see that, and they can buy into the system and buy into what you're doing because, you know, the two top guys, they're not fighting one another or whose team it is or who's getting the most shots. They just play and they play to win. I heard last week, I think it was Kevin Durant who said something about, like, he was envious of their relationship. So he spent time with them in the uh, Olympics. And I think, you know, I think that has, holds a lot of credibility to it. When a superstar like that can can see them and be with them in a practice on the floor, social situations, whatever it is, and he sees um, there's some great trust and great unity and great camaraderie, and they got each other's backs, and, and I, I, think it, I think that says it all. What's up, man? You all right? What's up, man? Hey, what you about to do? Chris Bosh, Vince Carter, Tracy McGrady. I mean, those three guys are probably the, the three most talented guys to ever play in Toronto. and quite frankly, could all be Hall of Famers. But the two greatest Toronto Raptors are Kyle Lowry and DeMar DeRozan. I mean, this is the, we're in the golden era of Toronto Raptor basketball. I mean, those guys I mentioned, Carter, McGrady, and Bosch, never accomplished the things that these guys have accomplished. So, uh, and I've always been a big believer in, in whether it be grade school, high school, college, pros, if you have terrific guards, you have a chance. And a big reason why this organization's had a tremendous uh, resurgence is because of those two guys. Hi guys, Jim. What's up, Jim? We're from here. We live here. Snapchat, what's happening? Hi 
nice. NBA All Star 2016 Toronto. Me and the boy Debo. Six out. I think it's pretty cool how they both love Toronto. Toronto loves them. Um, you know, you don't you don't say Raptors without saying Lowry and DeRozan. You know, you don't leave either one of them out, and uh, I think that's pretty cool. DeMar in the paint, left hand, all kinds of contact, and the ability to finish. Under two minutes to go, 101-101. DeMar to Kyle. Good. He's got 27, it's a 10-2 run. Lowry is back. Lowry up top. They get the switch. Gallinari on Lowry. Kyle let in the time tick away. Now attacking. Good. Oh. Raptors win it. 105-102. Toronto 2-1 and one on the season. Last season, Denver swept the Toronto Raptors. Raptors, despite leading by 19, had to battle hard after a six-point lead for the Denver Nuggets. Maybe uh, All right, man, hey, that's the way to pull it out. That, that team's a very difficult team to guard. All right, they're, they're tough, one-on-one, -on -one offensive players coming at you. All right, we stood the test except the third quarter. 35-point quarter can't be who we are. All right, we know that. But again, you guys found a way to win. And that's that's a big part of this league. It's finding a way. It's not gonna always be pretty. It's not be always what you want it to be or I want it to be, but we find a way. All right, that's the most important thing. So let's come in the bar new, watch the video, correct some things, see what we can fix defensively, offensively, and uh, go to watch and get it done. Here we go. We got to practice tomorrow. Here we go. Together on three, one, two, three. Together. <laughs> Let's do this. Who's up first? Thank God for that gold medal. You know, credit all to that, to, to winning that gold medal. But it, he's a phenomenal player. You know, he gets better every single year. Uh, he's a man on a mission, and hopefully he can maintain it for the whole season. You know, we're going to keep passing. We're going to keep looking for him. And the more he scores, the more we want him to shoot. It's his game, man. That's his game. That's his game. And, you know, people say you don't shoot threes. It don't matter. We average 30 points out shooting threes. It's pretty impressive no matter what. Uh, I just want to keep going, and uh, I know he will. So, you know, even we had one tonight, and they played some good defense on it, and I wish I would have threw it lower. But um, his ability is to, to set the screen. He's getting better screening every game and rolling and understanding how to play and, and knowing the game is, is helping him and helping me and helping our whole team. You're kidding him for the uh... – this is hot ass breath on my neck. <laughs> hey, what's up, bro? I didn't even open my mouth. It don't matter. Your breath is hot. <laughs> Cal crazy. You know, um, you know, just, you know, he he a tough critic on himself. You know, he felt like he didn't play as well as he wanted to. You know, the first two games, and it was the first two games. You know, we got a lot, a lot more basketball to play, and even tonight, you know, um, we going to continue to get better. We going to all continue to get better. So, you know, it's a process. James Johnson is a guy who is in the league for his great versatility. There's no question, Jones, when you look at his physical build and the fact that this is a league where you want to be multidimensional on both sides of the basketball, James Johnson fits the bill. And by the way, he's a great guy, too. A uh, terrific guy. And you know what? To that point, Sherm, I thought he stayed in his lane in Toronto last year. That's what got him to this position. Bingo. That's why everybody says he's worth a chance. Baby. Oh. Uh, I think the first stint, I think he was at a point still coming over from the Chicago Bulls where he had a kind of an, an inflated sense of what he was going to be as an NBA player. And I think sometimes didn't do the things that were asked of him. 
by his coaches and, and what was needed of him from his team. Um, the second time around, I thought he was a lot more realistic about the fact that, hey, I'm a professional player. This is what I am. These are my strengths. These are my weaknesses. And in the words of Dwayne Casey, I'm going to stay in my lane. And, you know, you, people really haven't mentioned this at all. The Raptors won 56 games last year, and there's so much attention about Bismack Biombo leaving. James Johnson did a great job for the Raptors last year. You know, you consider the fact that Damari Carroll rarely was healthy a year ago. I mean, who played a lot of minutes last year at the three spot? You know, James Johnson. And originally at camp, uh, he started off kind of playing a little bit more at the four. And then, you know, then the injuries ha happened to Damari Carroll. And suddenly now he's playing at the small forward position. I thought he did a really nice job for the Raptors last year. Veteran player, sound defender. And again, I thought he was a lot more mature, realistic, and uh, cognizant of what uh, he had to do to help his team win. That was nasty, right? <laughs> I cocked that joint back and banged on him. Very likable guy, uh, always upbeat, positive, um, and again, I think maturing. Uh, you know, a young man, I think, early in his career in Chicago, here in Toronto, uh, you know, I, I think didn't really have a full sense of what it was all about. But now I think he's at a point in his career where he's a lot more humble and understanding and appreciative of what he has and uh, has done a good job. And, and, you know, when he went to Miami, uh, you know, he's, he's a big, strong, tough guy. And uh, he's capable of helping your team be successful. So I'm happy for him. He was a, you know, he's always a really pleasant guy to have around. It's always great to see James. You know, we um, we we got drafted together. You know, we we, we spent a lot of time together before we were drafted. You know, my teammate before he came back and for him to come back and, you know, um, you know, see him once again, you know, it's always great. You know, he was one of my favorite teammates, one of my favorite persons um, that I've met. Um, and I wish nothing but the best for him. You know, I'm pretty sure our relationship won't go way outside of basketball, but, you know, he's definitely one of a kind. Hey. <laughs> I know you. Hello, man. <laughs> How are you? I'm good. What about you? Good, man. Do I know you? Yeah. You left me big time, good boy. Never. Come on, Sam. How you? How you doing? I'm well. I think the city fell in love with him. You know, just you know, when I say he was one of a kind, he's definitely one of a kind with his personality. You know, type of guy he is. You know, he one of the toughest guys around, but at the same time, he he's one of the most caring. You know, teammates and friends that you can have. You know, he'll give you his last without thinking about it and wouldn't even ask, ask for it back. You know, when you have a guy like that, it shows. And it shows when he went out there and played. It showed when he was out um, around the city. And, you know, people gravitated to it. James Johnson driving right to the rim. Good! James Johnson. And it's a three-point game. And Terrence crossover pull up. Jay, good. And T. Ross feeling it tonight, folks. DeRozan trying to back down on James Johnson. Here's Lowry spinning, spinning back. Bucket. Lowry finds Norman, gives it up. DeRozan, little shake, shimmy, pull up. 30 points for Demar DeRozan. Which is In wild. five consecutive games. And the Toronto Raptors behind the 34-point performance from DeMar DeRozan and the 20 points off of the bench from Terrence Ross will defeat the Miami Heat 96-87. Uh, how you been? You good? Still swaggy as ever? No matter where he is, no matter how much time or distance is between us, 
all of us on this team. He's always considered family, our brother. And it's just pretty much like when he's back around, it's like he never left. So everyone was happy, excited. We're all proud of him. And uh, we definitely miss him. Oh, no, oh, no, oh, no. I wish nothing but the best for him. You know, I, I hope every opportunity that he, he wished for, you know, comes around his way because he deserves it. You know, um, you know, he's seen the ups and downs of the lead. And, you know, I just want him to bounce back and, you know, be where he want to be. Say what's up to OG. and welcome to the Rap City Social presented by Bell. It's so good to see so many familiar faces out here tonight. It was cool. You know, it gave us an opportunity to interact with the fans off the court, uh, them see our personalities, most importantly for them to see how we interact with each other. Um, it gave them a little, a little taste of what it's like to be around us. You know, we're constantly joking, having fun, making the rookies do crazy things. And uh, it's just a real family type environment. And it gave us an opportunity to interact with the fans, talk to them, sign autographs, take pictures, allow them to ask us whatever questions was on their mind and just for us to hang out with them, you know, let them know that we're not just what you see on the court. You know, we're fun, uh, you can enjoy being around us and we all like to have a good time. Yo, you're the, you're the man, bro. Can I get my fellow rookies? Rookies, where y'all at? Come on stage, please. Jakob. Pascal, Fred. Come on, Freddy. Right now we have our rookies right now. They are going to sing you all a song. I want everybody to sing along, okay? I'm not gonna tell you the name of the song, but once the oh, beat, when the beat drops, oh, no. Just, just, just drop the beat. Yeah, just drop the beat. Just for a little bit. Just for a little bit. There we go. Right Y'all ready? Rookies did great. Um, I was a little shocked that they didn't know the words to a thousand miles. They really needed the sheet. But uh, I thought they did great, you know, singing the song. They had fun. They didn't fight me. You know, they, they saw the sheet. They read it. They did it. No problems. Uh, I like Jared's little twist on it, having them doing a little dance. Y'all want to see a dance off? Yeah. Ooh. Who's up first? Who's up first? Who's up first? Who do y'all want to see first? Yeah. We're gonna go by draft pick, everybody. Let's go, Jacob. I think we realize that JV is no longer the worst dancer on the team, the person with the worst rhythm. You know, I think Jacob takes the cake on that one. But I'm glad they got up there. I'm glad they, they had fun, they enjoyed it. You know, they didn't fight me, they didn't complain, and we all had a good time. The Raptors get set to play eight of the next 10 on the road and start in a very, very difficult place, Sherm. Oklahoma City, tough to play, and might be even tougher for the Raptors if Jonas Valanciunas does not play. He is questionable right now as we head toward game time. Next week on Open John. Alex McKagney and Big Cat, thank you so much, you guys. To never forget, never like, Stop believing my game every day. Try making me more professional, more consistent. I really appreciate everybody that's there for me. Yeah. 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 